I'm giving series of lectures in neuroanatomy. And before then, we are considering the organization of human body. Human body is organized into four structural and functional level. Cellular level, tissue level, organ level, and systemic level. Each of these levels contribute to the totality of the organism. These organizational levels form the basic for the various specialities and the approaches of studying the subjects of anatomy. Let's see what is involved in the cellular level. The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of human life. It is at this level that vital functions of life, for example, metabolism, growth, irritability, repair, and reproduction are carried out. A cell is composed of minute particles called atoms, which aggregate to form large particles called molecules, which further bound together to form macromolecules. Certain macromolecules are arranged into small functional structures called organelles. The nucleus, mitochondria, and endoplasm reticulum are cellular organelles. Each of these organelles perform a specific function within the cell. The human body contains many specialized cells, each of which perform specific functions. For example, nerve cells, muscle cells, bone cells, blood cells, etc. Each of these cell types has unique structure which are directly related to its function. At the tissue level, tissues are aggregation of smaller cells that perform specific function. For example, the endometrium of the uterus is a tissue which contains many uterine smooth muscle cells whose function is to contract the uterus during labor. In human, there are four basic tissues. Epithelial tissue, nervous or nerve tissue, muscle or muscular tissue, and connective tissue. Some authorities consider blood as a separate tissue. Look at the organ level. An organ is formed by aggregations of two or more tissues, which are integrated in such a way that it performs a particular function. Examples of organ include heart, uterus, stomach, skin, etc. Each organ has one or more primary tissue and several secondary tissue. In the stomach, for example, the inner epithelial lining is considered the primary tissue because the primary function of the stomach, absorption and secretion, occur within this layer. The secondary tissues of the stomach are the supporting connective tissue, smooth muscle, vascular, and nervous tissue. At the system level, the body system consists of group of organs that have similar or related functions. Examples of system are digestive, circulatory, nervous, etc. Certain organs may serve several systems. For example, the pancreas function with both digestive and endocrine system. All the systems of the body are interrelated in function, constituting the total organism. This system level forms the basic for the various clinical specialties. There's a diagram simplifying the organization 
of the nervous system. The functions of the nervous system entail picking up information from the environment through the sensory receptors. Enter the central nervous system. That is made up of the brain and the spinal cord where the information is integrated. Then it's taken back to the effector organ through an afferent pathway for response. So the central nervous system, apart from integrating interpretation, also store information in a form of memory. The nervous system is divided into the central nervous system, or the CNS, which include the brain and the spinal cord, then the per peripheral nervous system, which comprises the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. So in this particular session, we will focus our discussions on the anatomy of the brain. First, we will consider the removal of the brain. It will involve lectures and demonstration. We will look at the intracranial compartment. We will look at the dura spaces, and we will finish up with the dura sinuses. So the removal of the brain. It is important to note that the brain and the spinal cord constitutes the central nervous system. The brain is an important vital organ of the body. For that matter, like the other vital organs, it is well protected by bony structures. The complex structure of the brain is located in the cranial cavity, completely surrounded by cranium and cranial dura mater. Therefore, it requires knowledge and care in order to remove the brain in block.